Hello, my name is Austin Byrne, Senior Product Manager for Software and Applications within GE's Grid Automation, Monitoring and Diagnostics Division. I'm going to spend a few minutes here going through the integration of the 8 Series Relay into our Perception Fleet software and highlight some of the key benefits. Perception is designed to manage all of the critical assets within your fleet and give you an idea of the health or any risks that there may be within the equipment. If I look at my GE plant asset here, you can see I have a number of different critical assets that I'm monitoring, specifically motors and transformers. If you take a look at the motor first, so the first screen that you can see is a motor property page, which allows you to input all of the critical information about the motor that's being evaluated. We then have the 869 relay listed below, which is attached to that motor. The good thing about the Perception Fleet software is it can automatically connect to an 869 relay using an IP address of the relay. There's no need to have an RTU or data concentrator. Um, the software is capable of directly connecting to the relay and downloading the data. Once the data has been downloaded, is it available to view in many different data analysis tools? First one we're going to take a look at is the data table. So the data table allows you to have a look at the different information um, downloaded from the equipment in a raw data format. So you can see here we have the stator subsystem information. If we go to our status table, the status table shows you all of the most recent information downloaded. So again, I can go to my stator subsystem and I can see when that data was downloaded for that particular asset. If I go to my trend chart, I can then go in and I can add in, again, data points for my stator subsystem, for example, and do a trend line analysis of the information that's in there. The ESA data sheet is a predefined list of data points for looking at the different subsystems to be analyzed uh, for the, the motor. So you can see we have dedicated sheets for the load subsystem, bearing subsystem, mechanical subsystem, stator subsystem, rotor subsystem, thermal subsystem, and supply subsystem. The ESA circle chart provides an analysis of a fault type based on whether it is a bearing, mechanical, or a stator fault. So you can select which area uh, you would like to analyze. The diagram itself is broken down into 12 different bins, as you can see, and the bins represent the load percentage on the actual motor itself. So as the motor starts to increase in load, you will see the data points represented by the blue dots in the chart start to appear as the 869 records the different state of the um, frequencies uh, for bearing, mechanical, and stator. If any of the frequencies start to increase in magnitude and then go beyond mm. the set alarm thresholds, you will see the dot appear on the outside in the red zone or in the orange zone, as can be seen on the screen here. And that could indicate that there's an issue when the motor is running at that particular load. You can then go into the ESA models and take a look at the different models data that's available. And um, so I can see in here my, my bearing information. So there's a lot of data here. I'll just zoom into a particular area so I can do an analysis of the different information downloaded from the 869 uh, representing the analysis of the bearing subsystem. I can do the same with the, the load subsystem. Again, we have a, a model representation there. The mechanical subsystem, rotor, stator, supply, and thermal. There are also predefined trend charts for the learned data where you can look at the motor start, the electrical, and the thermal information. 
Going back to the motor itself, we also developed a dashboard for visualizing the critical information downloaded from the 869. So you can see here a summary of the events captured on the 869. If I click on the latest events tab, it will show me a record of the latest events. The motor start tab provides statistics on the acceleration time, effective current and peak current. And the breaker data tab shows you a pie chart representing the breaker arc energy and the breaker arc time. As well as raw data analysis, Perception Fleet also contains a motor risk algorithm that automatically interprets the data downloaded from the 869 and applies a risk index to the motor based on its perceived health. You can select the workflow to be executed against the motor from the motor properties page. I can then execute the workflow scheduler. Okay, so the analysis has completed. I can close that window down and I can now move to the dashboard and go to the ranking graph for this particular motor. So you can see here, based on the data downloaded from this 869, this motor has been classified as a high risk asset with a risk index of five. As I hover my mouse over the five dot in the uh, risk history, you can see here a summary of the reason that the asset has been identified as high risk. Again, based on the analysis of the data downloaded, including the ESA electrical signal analysis data. As more and more data is downloaded from this 869, this chart will start to populate and you'll start to see a history of the risk index of that asset over time, allowing you to trend the asset's risk. As you can imagine, having a large fleet of motors, analyzing all of that data without an application like Perception Fleet would take a long time. By using Perception Fleet, it's possible to very quickly identify motors in need of attention and implement relevant actions. Moving on to transformer analysis, you can see here I have a transformer added to the Perception Fleet software, and below that transformer I have an 845 relay, a BMT bushing monitor, and our Kelman DGA 900 multi-gas monitor. Having these 3G devices allows me to cross-correlate data and identify faults in greater detail than was previously possible. Here's an example of what that means. So as you can see here, we have a DGA gassing trend for this particular transformer. And we can see that on the 15th of August this year, we started to see a rise in acetylene and hydrogen. So if I add my 845 trip event information to this particular asset, I can see that there was a corresponding trip that occurred on this asset as well. I can also see all previous trip events captured by this relay. You can see here uh, an occasion where the transformer tripped and was taken out of service for a period and then brought back into service. So by looking at this information and perception, I'm able to correlate if a gas event preceded a trip event for that particular transformer. And that allows me to identify any particular problems that may have occurred as a result of the cause of the trip event. As with the motor, we also have workflows that allow you to do an analysis of transformers using industry standards. So I can apply my DGA standard to my DJ900 gas data. I can also apply a bushing algorithm and I can apply a models algorithm to the 845 data that's downloaded from the asset as well. Just like for the 869 relay, with the 845, I'm also able to look at the raw data downloaded. So I can go in to the trend chart. And for example, I can look at the transformer energization information. So I'll just choose phase A. And I can see then a representation of the inrush current data that was downloaded from the 845. Again, I can view all of the most recent information downloaded from the 845 in this data workbook or I can look at it in the data table in its raw data form.
Finally, another feature that we integrated was the ability to download and store the ComTrade files from the 8 series relays. The ComTrade files will appear listed here when they are downloaded from the device and they will be stored in the perception database where they can then be retrieved and viewed locally using an application such as InterVista. Thank you very much for your attention.